and welcome back to another segment of Beyond Boundaries. Today, we're going to get into the importance of relationships. Um, and I wanna talk about relationships from a professional perspective today. I got an email um, or an inbox message, I should say, um, from someone asking, how do you know what relationships are really helpful for you when you're trying to progress professionally? And I, I wanna talk about that today because I think that's a question that I've often had and, and I'm sure many of you've had as well. And so the way I look at relationships as it relates to professional connection and professional development is I like to say that there are three types of relationships that are really important for us to have. I think that as someone, no matter what level of your profession you're in, whether you're a leader, whether you're someone that's a, an aspiring leader, whether you're someone that's really just an expert in your craft and you're looking to just continue to grow and develop, I think it's really important that we talk about these three types of relationships that I, I value. Anyway, so it's my, my cup of tea and I hope you like it too. Um, the first one is, I think everybody should have a relationship where you are in fact in your zone of genius and you are able to contribute and give of yourself and from yourself in a way that is gratifying for you um, the work that you do and those that you touch. Um, that's, a, that's a really, really powerful relationship to have um, and to establish where you are someone that is seen as the master, if you will, of your craft because you're able to share that with others that may be looking to develop in you know, those areas that you are currently great in or you're known for or you're known in. Um, that's one of those relationships that I don't think a lot of times we talk about because many people are moving on to the next thing or sometimes we don't want to toot our own horn. And one of the things I learned is that if I'm not talking about those things that I'm doing and I'm not sharing it, then how will someone else know that these things are possible for them? I was speaking at a conference um, last month and a woman came up to me afterwards and her words to me were, oh my gosh, you gave me so much hope. My son wants to be an organizational development psychologist and I didn't even know such a thing existed. And so you're living proof that that's a real career. And I thought to myself, if nothing more, just standing in the fact that I own my profession and I love what I do and I share that with other people, that gave that mother some reassurance to encourage her son to continue to pursue something that is very, very um, intriguing to him, something he's passionate about, and something he definitely sees as a career path for himself. So I think it's really important that we share more of what we do, that we share more of who we are. And again, I'm talking in the professional sense, but we can apply this to any aspect of life, if you will. The second type of relationship I wanna talk about is one where you are actually being poured into and you are the person that is the mentee. And I know mentee and mentor are words that we typically associate with younger people, younger generations, but I believe everyone should have a mentor. In fact, I have several mentors and they pour into me for different reasons. One of the reasons I really value those relationships is because there are times when as much as I believe I can and I've done things that I'm really proud of, there are those moments when I can talk myself in and or out of a situation all at the same time. I mean, in one conversation, I can go from being excited to really thinking about, okay, how am I going to get this done and where am I gonna start? And I found these individuals to be very helpful, reminding me that I can do it. And not always that they're telling me that, but I look at the work that they're doing and I look at the inspiration that they bring through the work that they do. So again, they're reciprocating that thing for me that I shared with you in terms of that first relationship um, that I think is important where we show up as the person that's providing the inspiration. So yeah, that's a good one. And so now when I need it, I have these individuals that can pour back into me. Um, something else that mentor-mentee relationship does, and if you don't wanna look at it as mentor-mentee, look at it as someone that is actually an advocate for you or someone that is actually helping you to position and, and be that checker for those blind spots that you can't see. And it's like those things that we have in the back of our head. We don't know what's back there. And so professionally, we do have blind spots. And personally, we have blind spots. But I wanna talk about those professional blind spots. There is a great sea to navigate in any profession. And so having someone that not necessarily has traveled the road that you're traveling, but someone that can help you see the things that you can't see 
while you're on the road because they're there and maybe they're a few steps ahead of you in terms of trying some of those big audacious goals that you now have your eyes set on. So I think if that's not a relationship that you're currently leveraging, I would say to you that you definitely want to tap into that one. There are many, many people that are going to bring things to your world, bring things to your context that aren't going to be beneficial for you. And sometimes if you're anything like me, you want to help everybody. You're not always able to see that. And I'm thankful for a couple of the people that I, I, you know, I, I smile now because they come right to mind that remind me what my purpose is and that while I love to help people, everyone's not ready for that help. And I, I love the fact that those relationships keep me grounded and they keep me focused and moving forward. So now this third relationship is one that gets a little tricky sometimes because as you're navigating your circle and as you're moving forward, having someone that I like to call as a thought partner can be a little interesting and sometimes you have to remember that those thought partners they're not there forever and so that that thought partner or that that share that pair share if you will as i like to call it sometimes that's that person that's on a similar path as you and you can bounce ideas ideas back and forth um, for each other you can talk about things you can you know ask questions you can you know look at your profession and your career from a point of view that both of you are currently looking probably at the same from the same angle if you will and that person is really really important because you can sometimes encourage them and they can sometimes encourage you and as you move along that professional journey again you're able to see that this is possible you are doing it there are others doing it just as you are and sometimes you just kind of need that space to have those moments of, of transparency or those moments of vulnerability that you're not maybe willing or ready to share on other levels. So if these aren't relationships that you're leveraging, I highly recommend that you think about who these people can be um, for you and with you as you, you know, continue on your professional journey. And again, I didn't go into any career track specifically because I don't think it matters. I think it's just a matter of having support. I hear so often that it's hard to find support. I don't think that's true. And I think we will, we will, whatever we create in our minds, that's what we're going to manifest in our lives. And so if we believe that it's hard to have support, then we're not going to find support. I find just the opposite. I find that there are always people that are willing to work with me, willing to support me. And I'm, because I'm just as willing to share with and support others. So those are three relationships that I want you to think about today. Um, you know, on the other side of it, there are relationships that are too costly and we shouldn't be investing in those. And those are any of those relationships that aren't doing those three things for you. They're draining you. They're pulling things from you. They're causing you to use brain power for things that don't even really matter when you should be using that energy and that, that excitement for those things that you really want to move forward in your professional and personal lives. So on that note, those are some things that I wanted to share as it relates to relationships as we continue to move beyond boundaries. Until our next segment, thank you for tuning in, and I'm Dr. Shaniqua Fleming.